Remember that challenge call? It's second. It's the second quarter, a second down, and we're moving the ball pretty well. And you call a challenge on a a ball that wasn't clear. It wasn't clear and obvious, and you waste the time. What are you thinking? You want to keep your job, and you have that play. I I don't understand how you can legitimately go tell me to my face that you thought that was gonna be overturned hey guys what's up my name is anthony welcome to another edition of bna sports talk i want to uh, start off with talking about the uh, the giants game against the redskins and we this happens every single year you know we're four and twelve four and eleven five and eleven it's consistent now for the last couple years you know we, we suck in the beginning of the year and then at the end it's like oh we have hope what you know if we would have beaten the arizona cardinals and the eagles we'd be playing for the division this week pretty much i think we'd lose a tiebreaker to dallas but no 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 kidding like if we beat the jets the cardinals and the eagles i know three big ifs but coaching had to do with a lot of it if we had a different coach that's a, that's the difference but we'll talk about that later but if we would have won those three games we'd be playing for the division this week we could easily be in the jets we could have easily beaten the Cardinals, and we were beating the Eagles 17-3. to We would be playing for the division this week. Uh, and I know we wouldn't have gotten far, but that's how kind of close we are. And But that's what happens at the end of every single year. Last year, it was like, oh, you know, there was a playoff scenario with three weeks left. But, like, every single game had to go right, and then we lost 17 to nothing against the Titans. But... No, every single year this happens. But the only difference is we have a bright. We feel like we have a brighter future now that we have Daniel Jones. We we kind of thought we had that with Eli Manning, but we realize now we realize we don't. Eli Manning wasn't having five touchdowns, zero interception games with 350 passing yards. That's what you know, Daniel Jones is doing, and we'll discuss more in the off season. A couple of points now I want to mention: we need a big time wide receiver who who's big. Uh, Darius Slayton's pretty tall. We need a guy who can do one on one because we don't need Golden Tate jumping up and uh, going up for hail marys. You know, the, we need a guy who's just like Dallas Goddard, jump right up 50 50 and be able to make the catch 90 percent of the time. We need a 90 10 guy. You know, we ha- we have a lot of slot guys that we brought in for Eli. Um, yeah, so the recap of that game, it, it's we. this happens every single year, and they won the tank bowl. We're going to get the left tackle, and they're going to get the defensive end. You know, hopefully the left tackle is better than the defensive end, and, you know, he doesn't get blown up by Chase Young. And people think Chase Young is going to be good. I'm praying that he's not. I'm praying that he's not. I pray that he goes back to school. There's a good um, defensive end out of Ohio State, and he's doing pretty well. Other takeaways from the game, uh, Pat Shermer, he he, he was uh, pretty emotional because he realized Daniel Jones is his guy. And uh, he I guess he focused too much on the, the development of Daniel Jones. You know, he, the, all the fundamentals are wrong with his team. We had costly penalties. Corey Ballantyne, I know he's a fifth rounder and all. He sucks. He sucks. You know, Janoris Jenkins, the, I guess all that that noise is out of the locker room now. Now we get a focus. That's where we have a bright future. But uh, Corey Ballantyne, he's not the answer. We're going to need a, a cornerback in the draft. And uh, other things uh, that Pat Schirmer doesn't do well. Remember that challenge call? It's second. It's the second quarter, a second down. And we're moving the ball pretty well. And you call a challenge on a, a ball that wasn't clear. It wasn't clear and obvious. And you waste the time. What are you thinking? You want to keep your job and you have that play? I, I don't understand how you can legitimately go tell me to my face that you thought that was going to be overturned. It's either somebody in your ear that's awful or you're just bad. And I think he needs to be fired. But And he was pretty content with that. He was pretty emotional about Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones went out to a party. He was excited uh, with Eli Manning. People are making fun. Like, oh, we're celebrating 4-11. and But, you know, Eli Manning, live it up. Uh, I made fun of Sam Donald the other week of kissing girls in a bar, but he's kissing girls. You know, Daniel Jones and Neil Manning, they're being responsible, I'm assuming. They're playing flip cup. It's its a nice, genuine thing. You know, with Sam Donald, I think he's being immature. Daniel Jones and Eli Manning, they're, there's two guys having a fun night out. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you're if you're a quarterback of a franchise and there's the videos of you kissing girls, um, you know, at a bar after after you win a game against the Dolphins, I mean, come on. That that I I may be just like a biased fan. That's why I don't really want to mention it that much. But I think it's fine. Eli Manning, he it's at the end of his career. It's his last game. Let let him have some fun. You know, you can laugh at him, but I think it's it's a nice thing, a nice bonding experience. And now Daniel Jones is the guy. It was a nice little. Um, we'll do a full season recap later. But it was a nice little transition. How Eli Manning had his last two games. Daniel Jones got to prepare a little bit, take us a little step back after um, a huge raucous and. 
And hopefully his his ankle is going to be fine. That's pretty much, I mean, all uniquely I have to say about this. Uh, Dwayne Haskins looked good. But every quarterback looks good against our defense. Case Keenum ended up looking good. So I'm not taking a bunch of stock into that. I still think Dwayne Haskins doesn't hustle. I still think, I, I, I don't know. I think it's me being a biased Giants fan. Like, if if they're switch position, I would love Dwayne Haskins. I would hate Daniel Jones. Like, oh, look at this kid. What is he doing at a bar? But, uh... Yeah, I don't really like Dwayne Haskins. Like, the, his whole moxie about him. He's, like, walking around the field. Like, he makes a big play, and he, he acts like, oh, you know, I've been, you know I'm going to win the Super Bowl. It's like, come on, you're 3-11. Uh, two 3-11 teams. Uh, I get it. You want to play hard. Um, Leonard Williams, I want, I want to keep him. Uh, this run defense is great. Uh, I, I keep on saying, we're going to talk more about it later. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, like, suspend it a little bit. But... Uh, Leonard Williams looks good. This defensive line is legit. We get a couple cornerbacks, get a premier pass rusher, like I mentioned in a previous video. We're not that far off. You know, if you look at all the the teams in this division, the Giants look like they have the best future here. They really do. And um, I, I'm excited going to next year. But this has to be real. I can't go into every single year. Every single year, it's just like, yeah, we're gonna win. You know, nine games. You look at the schedule. It's just like, oh, we can easily win nine games this year, and it never pans out. And we need it. We need an elite defensive mind. We need a guy who's gonna be able to to lead us into the future. And um, I think that could be Ron Rivera. That, but I've talked about it before. You need a guy who could still confidence in this team. But you don't want to mess up the culture too much right now because they're all young. I don't know. There's a lot of questions to be asked. I'm excited to see what happens. And uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.